okay? So that they told that to the judge. They didn't say that law enforcement didn't allow them to, but they just said, we didn't speak to the father, so we don't know. And by the grace of God, that judge overruled. Wow. And he's That's like, unheard okay. of. Yeah. Yeah, the judge overruled it and said, okay, no, you know, the children will go to the father. And they gave me seven hours monitored visitation a week with both my sons. And he said, Ms. Bruno, you have 24 hours to vacate your home. And the next day, social services will show up to your house to see if you have cleared everything out. And, you know, they'll write a report about it. And, you know, they will be in contact with you about your visitation and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, court ordered to take child abuse classes, uh, individual counseling and parenting classes. So, I mean, my life was completely taken over by this thing (laughs) because you know splitting up the family is in the child's best interest right right and meanwhile people don't realize that you're getting financially drained at the same time not not that it's the most important thing but it's yeah but it's still a compound it is no but i mean thank god i had the financial means absolutely because when i got court ordered to take those child abuse classes in my head you know in my biased opinion or in my biased mind i'm like what the heck am i going to do in a child abuse class Right. In there with a bunch of drug addicts, uh, you know, alcoholics, domestic violence. What the heck? Yeah. And when I get there, everybody's in the same boat as I am. Wow. Did you have to pay for the class? Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. Yep, I and had to pay for can. it. Yeah. And I was in there and hearing everybody else's stories. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, there was an 18-year-old in there. 18-year-old boy, right, who had a baby. And he was in the bathtub giving his daughter a bath and the big bathtub, right? So he got in there and when he got in there and picked up the child, he slipped and the baby hit her arm on the side of the bathtub. Yeah. And he said he heard the crack. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. So he goes to the hospital and he tells them, yeah, I was giving the baby a bath. I slipped and the something I, can you please, you know, check. Yeah. And because it was broken in more than one place, they considered it child abuse. Holy crap. Because yeah. the fracture was in more than one place. Sorry, so but accidents 18. happen. I, I mean, I'm like, he's 18 years old. He, of course, doesn't have the means for an attorney. Right. So he gets a public defender. And of course, the public defenders know the social workers, know the judges, knows how the system works. Sure. And he told him the same thing. You know, you're facing 15 years. It's criminal to do this to a child. So let's tell the judge instead of 15, you do two years in jail and you admit that you, you know, you fell and you were negligent or something like that, some kind of word, and you only do two years as opposed to 15. Oh my gosh. The public defender advised this 18 year old guy to do. So he went to jail for two years. And you're 20 years old. You have a criminal record based on something you didn't do. Right. Right. But you have no money. I'm like, what the heck? You What? Like, you're screwing people. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And then society doesn't know why children are the way they are. You know, why people rebel, why people are angry. I'm like, this poor child thinks that her father, yes, you know, did this to her or went to jail. And I'm like, it's crazy. That's right. So in another case while I was there, this other person who I'm still in touch with has the same lawyer I did, same judge I did, same caseworker I did, oh, same hospital I went to, <laughs> everything the same. And her 18-month-old at the time had broken his tibia. And again, she didn't know how. Okay, so I guess that's the red flag for them. If you can't explain how your child got injured, then you're guilty, yeah. right? So she went to the hospital. Again, he was crying, nonstop crying, didn't know what. It took the hospital seven hours to figure out what was wrong with him, wow. right? And I'm like, you're the doctors. It took you seven hours. Did you expect us to know? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Good point. So again, tibia broken, child abuse, and they took him away. They took her other four children, They took her husband's two children from a previous marriage. Oh my gosh. And to this day, she she didn't get her kids back. Her parental rights were terminated in October of 2017. And this happened in May of 2015. 
and they split up the kids. Uh, I mean, one of the kids from the husband's side, she has cerebral palsy. Oh. So they took her away and put her in another home. And I don't know if you know, but the state gets more money if the child yes, is- Yes, they do. Special needs, absolutely. Yes. The more drugs they can put them on, special oh. needs, uh, certain yeah. looks, certain and they races. And have quotas too, right? Uh, it, I think each state has quotas as well. Right, oh yeah. yeah. I don't know exactly what the quotas are, but I know the funding is definitely based on the amount of kids that are in the system. Right. Yeah. So if you don't have X amount of kids in the system, then the funding, the federal funding gets cut, which means social workers will lose their jobs or directors will lose their jobs. And mm -hmm. you know, that's what happens. Follow the money. That's, yeah. That's yeah. why I was shocked when they were asking your mom if she would sign papers, because normally they won't give them to family. Family right. doesn't count as keeping them in the system. Well, yeah. Well, she's still getting money though. She was still getting the six seventy a month per child. So, so what's, yeah. the, what's the situation now then? So, okay. So they kicked me out of the house, gave me the monitored visitation. And so during those days, you know, my attorney was completely set on going to trial. Like, you know, we're going to trial. Right. And while you're doing these child abuse classes, you know, you have hearings every few weeks that you have to show your progress, show what you're doing. And in the meanwhile, he's like, in one of the hearings, we got the court documents, you know, that they keep adding stuff to the court documents. And they did interview the nanny. And the social worker who interviewed the nanny, her one-year-old daughter at the time, I think she was one-year-old, had a black eye when they went to go interview the nanny. Oh. oh. Like a bruise. They called it a bruise under her eye. Okay. And she's like, okay, so you didn't think that was suspicious that you're doing a child abuse investigation. This woman was in the room with the child and yeah. now her daughter has a bruise under her eye. Yeah. And they're like, no, because the mother had a reasonable explanation for the child's injury. She said the child fell off the bed while sleeping. You can make up any kind of a lie. Are you uh, so, kidding me? So they just, yeah. <laughs> what's the lesson here? The lesson is just lie and make up a story. This is nuts. Yeah, yeah I'm like the lesson here is don't talk to law enforcement, period. <laughs> I, know, I, I know. know. They make it very difficult Because if they find trust. out you're lying, yeah, then you're going to yeah, get in big yeah. trouble. So, you know, they let, so they asked her if, if she would take a polygraph. And she said she would. So they took her to their people, right, to the the office and she did the polygraph and you know after I filed the civil suit we have all the depositions we have all the video we have the transcripts so I saw on video her polygraph her yeah. taking the polygraph and it was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen like the guy was almost flirting with her okay and she she's an attractive woman she's asian she's skinny she has long black hair and you know they were chit-chatting away like you know this was a little tea party they're having wow and i you can't see him in the video but you can hear the audio where he's asking the detective i don't know what you want is this what you want no yeah and then the detective yeah that's good okay and then they proceed so she's talking and then, you know, she gets a blanket basically and covers herself so that you can't even see her face because she said she was cold. So she covers herself while she's taking the polygraph, yeah. which was weird. Yeah. yeah. Again, she, it came back inconclusive. And when they asked her to take it again, she denied. She would not take it again. And then again, my attorney's like, that didn't raise any red flags for you? And they're like, yeah, it did, but... You know, that's her right, right? She did, can, uh, can't force her to take it again. So at that point, my attorney's like, okay, will you take one? I'm like, of course. And he's like, okay, but we're going to do it with our people, right? Because I don't trust them. No. Um, uh, the police <laughs> department to do it. Yeah. So it was $1,500 for me to go get a private polygraph. Wow. Yeah, with a very specialized person in Beverly Hills. <laughs> And I go, you know, with my private investigator. He's the one who drives me over to the to the polygraph guy. <laughs> Best friend. What? <laughs> not, not, not the Italian guy. I didn't have the Italian guy bring me over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I go and, you know, like comparing my polygraph experience to the nanny's polygraph experience, completely, completely different. You know, he was very professional. Yeah. You know, he explained the entire procedure to me. And he even talked about it, you know, if something comes out inconclusive, usually it's because 
the polygrapher doesn't know what the heck they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And doesn't know how to format the questions correctly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he really put me at ease. He's like, you know, unlike what you see on TV, you know, the blood and the, <laughs> the heartbeats and the breathing, right. you know, this isn't an anxiety test. He's like, of course, you're going to be nervous. Of course, you know, anybody in your, your place would be nervous. Sure. So that's not what I'm measuring. You no, know, he really explained it to me. And then he read all the questions to me and, you know, told me what to do. He's like, okay, the test questions, right? When he asked me something, he's like, I want you to lie. Okay. During the test questions. And that's kind of like the control. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then when you're telling the truth, I want you to picture that in your head. Like, don't just answer right away. He's like, you stop, you think about what I'm asking you, picture that moment in your brain and then answer. Cause that does cause a physiological change in your entire wow. body. And I don't think they tell that to everybody. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. <laughs> right. So I mean, he even told me like during the test, he's like, oh, don't, don't answer. Think. Right. So I did. So finally, I mean, it was nerve wracking. I mean, you have that thing here. I mean, they have a pad yeah. on your butt. I'm like, if I even squeeze my butt, they'll know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> right. The blood pressure cuff, the things on your fingers. And I'm like this again, I'm in the twilight zone. I am taking a flipping lie detector test. Wow. <laughs> what yeah. a crazy parallel universe it was and then you know the results came back and he he shows like on video he's like okay miss bruno has paid me before i take the assessment so that people can't say that i later paid him off for different result <laughs> yeah. here's the check and so funny then he's like okay we're gonna start the the test his voice completely changes <laughs> to another voice mm -hmm. <laughs> and the video is on me the entire time and I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, my body, please don't fail me now. Don't fail me now. Yes. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Right? So the results came back. I needed a score of six or higher to pass, and I got a 19. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Was so better he, than hers. Yeah. So he told me right then and there, he's like, yeah, there's no signs of you being deceitful. You know, I will write up your report. You are telling, you are being truthful, blah, 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 blah. So he wrote the letter. Yeah gave me the letter and then I give my letter to the, the attorney, right? He's like, you don't tell anybody, nobody, okay, knows that you're doing this. I'm like, okay, no social worker, no, nobody. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Next thing he makes me do, the psychiatric evaluation. Yes, you have to have that. As right. belittling as it is, you have to have that. So it's called an MMPI, I believe. And that's another independent thing that you had to have done? Yeah, yep, another independent, another $500 for that one. Say. What is your relationship with, like, your, uh, with your husband right now? Right now, we're good. Thank God we're good. I mean, when all of this is going on. It, it was well, a lot of tension, of course, you yes. know, when all this is going on. Yes. Um, especially when they kicked me out of the house. You know, my husband is home alone now with a 20-month-old and a newborn who just had brain surgery. <laughs> yes. Right? So, and running a business. Yeah. So, of course, he was majorly stressed out. Stressful, yes, very stressful. And they wouldn't let my mom come in the house. I think wouldn't let my mom be the caretaker because she was, like, the backup in case, you know, they had to remove him. Right. So, I, like, my family's in Brazil. I'm an only child, as I said. My husband's family's in Brazil. Uh -huh. so we have no family here. Absolutely no family here. And I'm like, who? I, of course, I'm not going to hire a nanny, right, to watch no. my kids <laughs> while my husband is working. No. So I'm, I called my family in Brazil. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, we need help to take care of these kids. Ricardo can't do it by himself. Oh. And my cousin, who's a dentist in Brazil, she's like, we'll come. We're coming. Oh. And I'm like, but you, your practice. She's like, I doesn't matter. I'll tell my my patients. I'll refer them to to somebody else. And we're coming. Wow. So they that came. God send. Yes. Yep, to this country, and they had to go through the interview process with social services and everything. And they got approved. So they took care of my babies for the thirty days that had started. But it was. You know, again, if you're a Christian, you know the significance of this, that it was 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yep. We had a hearing on the 40th day. Wow. Yeah. And my attorney, don't even bother coming to court today. Like, the status of your investigation hasn't changed. The criminal investigation is still open, so nothing's going to happen today. Nothing's going to change. Just, you know, don't bother coming. 
So I told my husband and my husband, like, I don't care what he says, we're going. Yeah. Like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so we head to the courthouse and at about, we arrived there at 8 a.m. Then at about 10.30, my attorney calls me. He's like, where are you? Like, I'm at the courthouse. He's like, okay, I'm on my way. Might be able to do something today. And then hangs up. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> language. <laughs> so I tell my husband, I'm like, okay, something's going to happen today. <laughs> so again, I text everybody. I start praying everybody. I mean, seriously, I had people all over the world. I had my friends in Switzerland. I had missionaries in mm -hmm. Africa. I had my family in Brazil. I had my family here in the States. I mean, everybody was praying for us. Everybody. And I mean, yeah, <laughs> so we were there praying. I'm like, okay, something's gonna happen. Everybody start praying. So he comes down the hallway. I go hug him. He's like, don't hug me yet. Don't hug me. I can't make you any promises. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he goes in the courtroom, comes back like with a bunch of papers, initial this. Like, okay, goes back, comes back, initial this, sign this, do this. I'm like, I'm still, I'm like, I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. Right. I'm just trusting God and trusting this lawyer. I got to do what I'm doing. So he comes back about, you know, this whole process was probably about two to three hours. So he comes back with this stack of papers. Wow. Right? <laughs> wow. And he's like, if you agree with everything that's written in the report, okay, there's no admission of guilt. There's nothing in here saying that you did this. Okay. And there's no, nothing saying that the nanny did it either, right? But they're just saying it was, these, this is what the doctor diagnosed it as. This is what has been done. You know, this is your parenting classes, blah, blah. You've completed all this. If you're willing to sign this and agree with what's in the report, they're letting you go home today. <laughs> so at that point, I'm like, if you would have told me to cut off my leg, I would have cut off my leg, right? For me yeah. to go home and be with my boys. Yeah. Like, I, I'm like, yes, whatever you want me to do, <laughs> yes. So at that point, I didn't really understand, but today I know it was a non, um, oh gosh, what's the word? No contest? No, no contest? No contest, yes. Okay. Yeah, no. So that's what I was signing, was a no contest. Right, you're not. So, not. But they let me go home that day on the 40th day, and he even told me, he's like, I've been doing this for 23 years, and I have never seen them let anybody go home before trial. No. So you definitely have a higher power working for you. Yes. Absolutely. We've done, uh, we've done, <laughs> we've probably done 15, 20 or more interviews and we've never yeah. heard that before. Either. Yeah. Done way more than 20 interviews. A hundred and thousand interviews. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. No, you don't hear of no. that whatsoever. Whatsoever. So the judge put us on what is known as the CRISP program here in California, which is, Something, something, reunification, something. <laughs> I don't know what it stands okay. for. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Reunification so program, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> wow. So basically for six months, you know, the social worker will come to our house every, every month, once a month, will come to our house to come see how the children are. I was still court ordered to take all the, the stuff, the child abuse, the parenting, the individual counseling while this stuff was going on. Right. But I was home. So I'm like, I don't care. Come live with me for all I care. <laughs> right. Right. I get it. Yeah. So I was doing all that, going through all that. And that's where I met all these people. And, you know, and again, I'm in the child abuse class hearing all these stories. And I'm like, oh my God, like, like God, literally God, what is going on? It what happens. Is this is so evil. It yes. is. It is yes. so evil. And yes. when I got kicked out, I had nowhere to go, right? I have no family here. So I was sleeping. I told my lawyer, I'm like, where the heck am I supposed to go? He's like, well, the hospital is a monitored facility. So while your son is in the hospital in the PICU, you could sleep in the hospital. <laughs> How long was your son there? 12 days. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So he was there for 12 days. And... My mom, of course, went to, we go to the same church, my mom and I. So she went to go ask the pastor if he would come to the hospital to pray for my son. And the pastor was in Cambridge at the time. He was writing a book, <clears throat> but his wife was there and she was home alone. You know, she was at the church. So she's like, of course, of course I'll go. So she came at about probably 10 o'clock on Friday. No, Monday, probably like the Wednesday, like three days after the hearing. She came and she prayed for my son. And then she looked at me. She's like, I've been praying. And God told me you're coming home with me. Aww. 
So I'm like, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, they're my pastors. I mean, I know them, but not, you know, that sort of intimacy. Yeah. Or, you know, she was basically welcoming a stranger into her house. Yeah. But I couldn't have asked for a better angel at that point in my life. You know, I mean, she would cry with me. She would laugh with me. She would pray with me. She would have dinner with me. I mean, she was always there for me. And had it not been for my church family, my immediate family, my family in Brazil, I mean, it, it turned everybody's world upside down. Yes. Everybody. Sounds like you had a few angels. I did. I did. Thank God. Thank God. And like, I don't know how, the, how people who don't yeah, know say, God go through this. Yeah. What a support system you had. Yes, and I you did. still had it so hard. Yes. Can you imagine the people that don't have the support system that you have? I can't. I can't imagine. And, you know, I, one of the nights when I was at the pastor's house, you know, at night by myself, you know, the social workers would write in the court reports that I wasn't emotional enough. Wow. And that I wasn't exhibiting the normal behaviors of a grieving mother. What? You know? Yeah. And I'm like, these people don't know what I do at night, you know, no. by myself. No. Of course. I'm alone. And that's when I cry. <laughs> yeah. You know, and what am I supposed to do when I'm visiting my son? I'm supposed to be crying the whole time? Of course right. not. You know, I have right. one hour with my son. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> what, right. What are you going to do? Be bawling right. with your son for an hour, though. Right. You know, of course. And, you know, and even, I don't know if you've read the story of Job. If you're familiar yeah, with the sure story have. of Job. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, even his friends told him he must repent, that he yeah. must have done something to deserve this. Right. Right. And I had people tell me that, I mean, not yeah. those words, but, you know, say, you know, you should repent. Right. And I'm like, okay. You know, so I did pray about it. I'm like, okay, God, who sinned? Was it me? Was it my parents? What happened? <laughs> right. Yeah. And again, you know, the Holy Spirit and God showed me, you know, Rachel, it's just the evil world we live in. Thanks. We're evil. I sure do. Thank you. So yes, what happened to the nanny? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. And you haven't... Nope, my Lord told me to not talk to her right from that first night. He's like, you call her, you tell her you no longer need her services and don't talk to her anymore. Wow. So I don't know. I don't know what happened to her. But I mean, legally, I know she never, nothing happened to her. They didn't take her kids away. They didn't, you know, open up a case against her or nothing. So what is the situation now? Are you still being monitored or what? No. So this ended in February of 2016. Oh, this is 2016. Okay. Yeah. So the, the case was closed in February of 2016, the social services case. So after the six months of the social worker coming to our house every month, yeah. her recommendation was that the case be closed again. Thank God. Right. Because they don't always do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So she recommended the case be closed. The judge closed the case. And then the criminal investigation kept going on until July of 2016. And again, like they didn't have anything against me. I'm calling my lawyer. I'm like, what the heck? When are they going to close this thing? Yeah. Right. And my lawyer is like, okay, now that the, the, the social services on the dependency case is closed, now I can pressure the DA. Right. And especially knowing that we have the lie detector test. We have the psychiatric evaluation. We have everything set. Right. And he said, he called her. He's like, you do not want to go to trial with me. Okay. I will humiliate your people. I mean, he went off on her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so she did. She closed the case. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so in what? And that was July, right? July of 2017. When the dependency case was closed in February, in March, I already started calling the civil rights attorneys. Because I'm like, these people are not going to get away with this. I'm like, I don't care. Like something, somebody has to do something. Yeah. Right. And I have the means, I have the financial means, I have the education, I have, you know, that was the thing, like people think they only go after poor people, uneducated yeah. people, yeah. and racial minorities, domestic violence, substance abuse, alcoholic. I'm like, I'm none of the above. Right. None. And I'm like, if it could happen to me, it could happen to anybody. Absolutely. So, you know, through the entire process, like I said, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, right. God allows things to happen to, to us. We may not understand at the time why but he always shows up, right? And I have no doubt that God was with me the entire time. And today I have no doubt that this was not my dream, but it's definitely my calling, Yeah. yeah. right? And I'm like, God, you did not let me go through all this in vain. So I'm not gonna be quiet. I'm not gonna stay quiet. 
like, you know, the education, the money, the talents you've given me, this is all for this now. <laughs> and that's what I want to do with my life. I mean, oh. <laughs> thank so God, because file? we know that this is such a big problem. We've done a hundred thousand of these interviews. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not the number, but I mean, we've done a lot for it is two a and a half years, uh, a long yeah. time. So did you file, tell us, tell us about the laws. I know you can only speak. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, so we filed the civil suit in May of 2017. Against who? Against LA County, Los Angeles County, Orange County, the Children's Hospital, and all the individual defendants who work for the, those entities. Okay. So I can't remember all their names now, but in right. total it was about 15 defendants. Okay. So we filed the lawsuit and you know, then discovery begins, right? You have the first meeting with all the lawyers and you've presented to the judge. The judge tells you whether you have a case or not. And it was based on fourth and 14th amendment right violations, right? So the privacy and the parental consent and a warrantless seizure, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So that was filed and the judge had set the jury date, the jury trial for June 4th, 2019. Oh my gosh. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, so what else can you say? So, but we did not go to trial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a I know, I know, that I know. Sounds like a settlement, <laughs> like a settlement to so me. Anticlimactic, I know. <laughs> 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 but back in 2017, you know, we started the discovery. So that's when we're trying to get all the, the documents, right? And the juvenile records are sealed. Can't get them until they're 18 years old. Make a motion to the judge. We're suing you, so we need this. And they come all redacted. Like 700 pages. Oh. Like more than half of it was redacted. Blacked out. Oh, Blacked out. How can that, how can that no, even not, a document? Right. Well, they're like, you know, this is under protective order, blah, blah, blah. It's to protect the minors, right? Right. So, but like you, of course, my lawyer knew better. So he's like, nope, no. So we make a motion to the judge showing them that we need to know this information because of, you know, whatever arguments he made. And the judge did give us all the open files. And that's really when we found out the extent of the vaccinations, the extent of the medical examinations, anal wink test on my 20 right. month old. Does that mean? What is it? It's a what? Anal what? Wink. Wink test. Wink? Yes. So they do it for sexual abuse, which again, there was no suspicion of sexual abuse in my case whatsoever. Right. <laughs> but it's like they're digging for anything that they can use against you, right? So I mean, I, I don't know what they use, but they use some sort of device on the yeah. child's anus to oh. see if it contracts. And I guess by the way it contracts, they can tell if the child has been sexually abused or not. This is, this it is, is, it's so this, it's crazy. So, and I'm like, you people are crazy. It's, it's <laughs> sick. It's the whole system. Is. I mean, I, the yes. whole system. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and what they put your son through. Right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that's what my heart was breaking for David the whole time for my 20 month old. I'm like this poor kid. I mean, you know, my baby, of course, he went through terrible physical and trauma, but he's not going to be old enough to remember. But my son, he did remember. Yeah. He did remember. And even up until he was about three years old, three and a half years old, when any time I left my mom's house, he was screaming. Like, we'd go, to my, we'd go to my mom's house after church on Sundays. And then when it was time to come home, he would just kicking and screaming and like shaking. You know, like, like shaking, like I'm going to go take him somewhere or, you know, where am I going? Like, I don't trust anybody. Aww. Right. And when my mom had to go in there, put him in the car, had to hug him, had to kiss him, had to assure him like every single time. You and should file a lawsuit on, on his behalf. Right. <laughs> right. I, you know, because Angie yeah. and I have been talking about, you know, uh, we read these stories about people being in prison for 40 years and then they're found not guilty. And, right. and so it's the same thing here. It's like, how do you repay somebody that's been through yeah. that kind of thing? Well, there's not, there's no money, right? Right. There is that, no money. That, that can, can give me back what I lost with my children. Yeah. Or what, what caused, you know, what they caused. So, but unfortunately that's the only way to hurt them Understood. is in their pocket. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So we did do the discovery. We did the depositions. So I have probably about 24 hours worth of video of depositions of the social worker that interviewed me at the hospital, her supervisor, the detectives that interviewed me, 
and the police officer that was at my mom's house. So we have them all on tape, on video, and the, the text messages that the social worker sent to her supervisor before ever interviewing me. Oh, no. Okay, she's telling her, social, to her supervisor, I'm on my way to the hospital. I just got a call, reportedly a newborn with a cranial fracture, blah, 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 right? Yeah. And mom has two kids. Uh, apparently there was a nanny in the house and nanny, blah, blah, blah. So she's telling, this is what I told the hospital staff, right? The so-called child abuse expert who doesn't identify herself. Mm -hmm. So I, I had told the doctor all this. So she, you know, reported that to social services, social services talking to her supervisor. And then the supervisor says, oh my gosh, do you think it was the nanny? And the social worker that came to interview me says, no, think mom. Oh, think mom. Uh, and she yes. had never even seen you or interviewed you or looked at you. Wait, so these, these are text messages yes, that we got access to through discovery in mm -hmm. our civil suit. This is so important that you yes. did this. Yes. That social worker should be fired. I, I mean, so people, so people I can realize. I the depositions online and I will when I have time to go through all the, the videos. Yeah. But you should have seen her at the deposition. That woman was sweating. <laughs> she should be. And she should be, yeah. is right. Wow. Yeah, she was sweating bullets. She did not look good. So I'm everybody, back. Everybody, everybody yeah. who goes through this needs to do that. They need to right. file a civil lawsuit. I encourage that with every single yeah. person we talk to. Just everybody doesn't have the means or the time, you know, to it's do it. Means when it's so expensive. It's it a lot expensive. of money. I mean, it was twenty twenty thousand dollars up front. Yeah. As and a it's very expensive. And then the depositions probably cost about four thousand dollars a day every yes. time you do one. Yes. So, I mean, it's really expensive. And then, and the system knows that, right? They know yes. that you're going to break the it. Dry and not everybody has the means to do it. So I'm like, my dream someday, if I could find a group of lawyers, you know, like the elves during the Clinton. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. If I could to find my own this... magical elves for CPS. <laughs> yeah. To have this service set up for people. Yes. Oh just... my gosh. I will, that would be amazing. <laughs> real amount, real amount. Yeah. I would volunteer in any <laughs> capacity right. I ever could. I'm not a lawyer, but I certainly right. would do anything that yeah. I could. I would love that. Well, well, I've it, told it my lawyer, like, because in California, I think technically you don't have to go to law school to be a lawyer. You could like intern under another lawyer. Oh wow! You could take a test every month or every year, you know, to yeah. see if you're keeping up with the with the curriculum. Yeah. Well, I'm like, I would do it for you. Like, I'll be your intern. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pre-law degree. I would be more than happy yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe the tide is turning with this a little bit, you know, because yeah. it, it's coming out a lot now in this. I hope so. I've written to the president. I've written to the first lady. I'm like, I will come to the White House. I don't care. Let me speak. Like, I, I don't have any fear. <laughs> yeah. Right. Awesome. Yeah, no. So, oh, so I, you know, yeah. after the depositions, I think they saw how screwed they were, right? Based on all the admissions. You know, my lawyer's like, did you know you had to get a warrant? Yes. But you didn't? didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, because of the nature of the injury to the child. And they're like, you know, that's not the legal standard. And they're like, yes, but yeah, you know, so they're sweating. They're trying to find a reason why they, they wouldn't do it. Right. And then he's like, why didn't you do anything to the nanny? And she's like, because she had a plausible explanation. So are you saying my client is lying? And then she's like, no, I wouldn't say that. So they're what like, okay, so what? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Like you just singled out my client. Yeah. And how about her husband? Like, did you verify whether he was out of state? And the detectives, like he was. So everything they told you up to that point had been truthful. And she's like, well, according to them. You know, I didn't have a chance to go call the, the airlines to see if <laughs> there really was such a flight. It's pretty simple to verify. Right. It doesn't take a whole lot. Right. And then she's, you know, he could have been covering up for his wife. Like they could have been in cahoots together. So uh, really? I can't find any excuse, yeah. right, to try to save their butts, <laughs> basically. When yes. basically it's glaring, the nanny right. was there, the baby right. started crying when the nanny right. was there. No, yeah. we'll ignore no. that part. I, yeah. I, think, I think the biggest issue here is, is trying to find out why they're targeting families like this. Why they, why they want to make up stories like that, uh, like they wanted to do against you. And 
Right. Like, well, I think the one thing, like according to my dependency lawyer at the time, like he said, if they're under two years old and nonverbal, they can be right. legally adopted if the case lasts longer than six months. So he said they're like vultures yes. with the little ones. If they're under two years old and they can't defend themselves, they can't speak. So they will swoop up. Yep. And take them. And then the older kids, you know, they can defend themselves. And unfortunately, foster parents don't want the older kids. No, nope. yeah. so they just stay in the system yep. until they age out. Yeah. So, so it sounds like you're saying it's like a money thing. Then you it think. is totally a money thing. Yeah. It is definitely a money thing. And you know about the Adoptions and Safe Families Act, right? That was signed in 1997. Absolutely. By Bill Clinton. Clinton. Yeah. Yes, which gives government incentives mm -hmm. for yes. adoptions. So yeah, when my mom got offered $670 per child, she said she nearly fell off the couch. She's like, what the heck? I don't want your money. <laughs> yeah, my grandchildren are worth more than that oh. to me with their family. Right, right. Oh my gosh. So it's definitely so, about the money. Did they try to get you to pay child support or anything like that oh, when you were no. kicked out? Oh God, no. Because they've started that now too. Yeah, yeah. No, I when, know my friend, yeah, who had to start paying child support or pay the probation officer to go to the visitation with her. Oh my gosh. And yeah. then you have to pay to go to certain centers. Yeah. And yeah. Really? It's ridiculous. It's it ridiculous. Is. It is. So and it's sad. So you, so it was a settlement then? So it was. So after, you know, the depositions, they saw how screwed they were. And the first mediation, the mandatory mediation was September of 2018. So we go to the Ronald Reagan federal building, right? This is a federal court. And we're there with our lawyers, with the mediator going back and forth. So our attorney's like, okay, so we might be here all day. You know, you might say 10 million, they'll come back to you with 500. Okay, that's how it's gonna be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, we're like, okay, so we're prepared to be here all day. So going back and forth, going back and forth. And the hospital was the first one to offer a settlement. Okay, and it was a small amount. But my lawyer, he's like, you know, after the discovery, we found out it was not the hospital or the hospital staff that administered the vaccines. Okay. It was the county at the children's shelter. They have their own nurses, I guess, and their own licensed people. And it was them who did all the vaccinations. Now, the hospital did do the x-rays and all that stuff. But social services did have what they call a general order to give to the hospital that was dated 2008. Whoa. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. Only 10 Man, years out of date. <laughs> but it's what they call a general order, which yeah. basically is the judge signing off, telling them do whatever the social worker tells you to do. Oh my God. That is scary. It is scary. And I'm telling you, it was 2008. Like what the heck? The doctor can't check the date. I know. But then my attorney's like, look, I understand, you know, you're right, it's ridiculous. But in a court of law, doctors are not expected to be investigators. Okay, so they're doctors, they have a piece of paper that tells them do this, then they're going to do it. They're not expected to go above and beyond, you know, their call of duty, which is to perform the medical stuff. To read? Like, they're not right. expected to read? Okay. Right. So he's like, so... In the long run, my attorney is like, the judge is probably going to throw out the hospital anyway, right? Because of their limited liability. It's like the real liability was with the, yeah. the counties, mm -hmm. right? And not the hospital. Mm -hmm. So you can either, you know, not take the settlement and keep them on, but probably the judge is going to throw them out and you're going to get nothing, right? From the hospital. So, and, you know, not to mention the cost, the added cost of the depositions and all that stuff. If you're going to interview every single doctor that did something to your son, that's going to cost a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. So he suggested that we take the settlement from the hospital and we took the settlement from the hospital and we made them make changes to their procedure. Oh, so nice. The yes. We said, that's part of our agreement. We won't settle unless you make changes to your policies right. and including this general order thing, no more. Yeah. Accepting yeah. general orders. <laughs> right. Cool. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So they did agree to do that. And they sent us the papers. They tell us when they're testing, when they're going to do the workshop with the doctors. It's like, you're more than welcome to come. So they were really, they were good. You know, the attorney was really good for the hospital. And of course, the hospital is a private entity, so they can, you know, they can manage their, <laughs> their yeah. PR better. Yeah. Right. So we settled with the hospital that day. 
or before that day, actually. We settled with the hospital before that day. But the hospital's attorney, we made a deal with them. Like, okay, we'll settle with you, but you can't let anybody else know that we have settled with you. Oh, so we had to show up anyway. Yeah, yeah. So you have to show up to all the depositions. Good. Okay. And you show up to the mediation. And he's like, you're going to be our fly on the wall in that deposition. <laughs> Yes. That was so smart though. That yeah, was the probably- mediation room, right? You're gonna be telling us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So according, you know, what was going on down there was that LA County and Orange County were trying to do what they call a global offer. Right? So we just give you a lump sum of whatever, a million dollars, and then we decide amongst ourselves who's gonna pay what. Okay, okay? amongst them. But it's a global offer yeah. between both counties and we move on. And then my attorney, nope, nope, we're not accepting a global offer. Nope, we want separate offers from each of you, right, from each of the parties involved. And if you don't respond within 30 days, then the offer is off the table. And if I hear any of you talking amongst yourselves, the offer is off the table. Wow. Okay, so he's we a bulldog. That. I like that. Yeah, no, he's, he's amazing. I mean, if you Google him, Sean McMillan, he has sued the county so many times. I mean, he's won so many cases. I love it. So he's amazing. That's, this is all he does is CPS stuff. All right. So, you know, then they came back and they, they didn't counter with us. They didn't have a counter offer. Then we're like, okay, fine. We're going to trial. Okay, so fine. We love September. We're going to trial. But then we continue doing the depositions. So later in December, the Orange County calls us, would you be willing to do a private mediation? And my attorney's like, okay, you know, you, you're going to pay for it this time, right? Because we already did the other one and you guys didn't come with anything. So this time you're paying for it and our offer is definitely going to be higher or our demand is definitely going to be higher than what it was last time. Yeah. Right? So, you know, they bicker back and forth about what the amount should be and that it's not fair, blah, 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 blah. blah. So, you know, but our attorney's telling us, look, you know, we should consider it. Yeah. As again, trial is going to be expensive. Right. Mm-hmm. And a jury is a toss up. Like you really don't know. Look at how many cases, look at the OJ Simpson case. Look at, you know, yeah. where you're like, what? How yeah. can you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I guess. How did that happen? Sure. Yeah. So he's like, you don't know. I mean, they may not like the color of your hair. Like one juror, you may remind them of somebody and they don't like it and that's it. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, so I would, you know, really advise you to try to settle before trial. And even if you win at trial, it's not going to be as much as this, as what they're offering you during the settlement. And even if you win, they're going to appeal it, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to appeal the decision. And then here we go back another two years. And yeah. then here we go again. So it's going to be like a five, six, seven year process. All money. All money. Yeah. 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 So and that time. day, so they came with a, a settlement offer that was acceptable to us. This so is Orange County? County? This was LA County. LA, LA County. County. Okay. Yeah. So the last one standing was Orange County, which was really the one that's social services, right? So they're really the ones that did the most damages. And then my attorney's like, okay, last one standing. They know they're the ones getting screwed now. (laughs) They're the ones who are going to be left holding the (laughs) The bag. (laughs) So I guess word got out that we had settled with the hospital. We had settled with LA County, LA County and they're the only ones left. So they called up my lawyer like, Hey, uh, you want to do a mediation? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What so else? there we go again. And okay, we did it. So before going to the final mediation, you know, I was, it was so hard. It was so hard to do it. Cause I'm like, I don't care if I win $1 at trial. I just want to see these people be held accountable. Yes. Right. Yeah, but then again, I'm like, I don't want to be stupid, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was really hard. And my husband and I went out for lunch with our pastors. You know, we prayed about it. We talked about it. And, you know, ultimately, he's, my pastor has been through legal stuff. You know, he said the same thing my attorney did. And ultimately, he's like, you know, think of the emotional toll that this is going to take on you. Yeah. And your family if you go to trial for the next you know, five years in this thing, enthralled in this thing, taking over your life. Yes. You know, and your children's lives. You know, they're young now, but they are going to get older. They're going to understand mm-hmm. what's happening. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's the opportunity cost, right? If I hadn't settled, I probably wouldn't be able to be doing what I am right now. Right. right? I'd still have to keep my mouth shut for the next five years. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're helping a lot of people. opportunity cost. Yeah. 
And so we did, and they finally offered us a number that we were, <laughs> we were happy with. But the funny thing, you know, just like we did with the hospital, we told them, you know, we'll settle as long as you make policy changes to how you deal with this. Yeah. So we did the same thing with Orange County. And, you know, make changes, train your social workers. They have to get a warrant, blah, 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 you know, all the different stuff. And then we asked one additional thing. We're like, we want a letter from the Office of Social Services or the C CPS people apologizing to the Bruno family for what they have done and blah, blah, blah. You know, my, my lawyer outlined everything on the little piece of paper yeah. it to the mediator, right? For the mediator to take back. So he comes back with a piece of paper and the amount that we had demanded is like crossed off, like with a little X and another number on top. Okay, fine. And then the other stuff, the policy changes, they're like, check, check. And then the apology letter, that thing was scribbled like, <laughs> like no <laughs> like there was some pressure on that pen right yes, they're like no and my lawyer laughed he's like i've asked for it before i know they wouldn't do it but it's always fun to <laughs> so the so the cross the crossed off number was higher <laughs> yeah they off, they off for more if only <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, but the apology letter, the, my lawyer's like, yeah, they're not going to give it to you. <laughs> He's like, the first thing you're going to do is post it. I'm like, of course. <laughs> Hello? So what kind of policy changes um, did you ask for? Well, concerning the training of the social workers, right? Further training about the warrantless seizures. Okay, you cannot remove a child without a warrant. <laughs> That's very That's simple. Yes. <laughs> yep. Right? But their excuse is the welfare institutions code welfare institutions code here in california that states if the child is in a life-threatening state or something then you don't need a warrant well you know what here's my thing with that mm -hmm. your 20 month old was with exactly. your mother right that's not a life-threatening situation exactly. at 2 a.m in the morning when you're in the hospital with another son so right. they can cross that off too right exactly even yeah. yeah. Ooh, you got her hot. She oh, got mad. Oh, it is. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I know. It is. No, and during those depositions, oh my gosh, I wanted to jump across the table, right? I bet, <laughs> I bet you sure did. did. I probably would have. He would be holding me back. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. So, those are some of the policy changes. There's more outlined. Now I'll need to read over it eventually. But yeah, so the settlement stuff needs to be approved by the judge. So we are in the process, you know, signing all the papers. And it's, since there's minors comp involved, they have to, we have set aside amount for the children, of course. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they will have their little nest egg when they turn 18. We decided 18, 22, and 30. Like, if you don't oh. know what you're doing with your life by the time you're 30, then... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great plan. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So they're going to have theirs. And then we're trying to decide what to do with ours. You know, when this all started back in 2015, we had enough money. We had saved our money to buy a house. We had a down payment. Yeah. So all that money went out the window. To lawyers. Mm, with yeah, everything. Patients. With everything for these past four years. Right. And our, our business closed. We had to close our business. Oh, no. Because we just couldn't, you know, my husband couldn't travel. And we couldn't keep up with the court hearings and me doing the the child abuse classes, parenting classes, and you know, all that stuff. So yeah, we closed our business in 2016. And, you know, yeah, it is what it is. You know, God has other plans for us. So it's, <laughs> it, is, it is kind of a little That's bit right. like a Job story, though. I it like. is, yeah. <laughs> it is. So, so what do you do now? Do you advise other people um, who are going through this? Can they call on you? Yes, definitely. If they want I me, mean, I'm not a lawyer, right? Disclaimer, I am not an attorney. <laughs> and I mean, I just know what happened to me, you know, and usually the five things I learned through this first thing, no warrant, no entry. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, they will try to intimidate you. They will pressure you. They, but do not, don't do it. And they'll probably threaten you. They'll come back with an armed police officer. It doesn't yep. matter. It doesn't change your rights that you need a warrant to come in my house. Yep. Right. And it doesn't mean that they're not going to go out and get one, but at least they'll have time to figure out what to do. Right. 
right? And then, of course, if you can, get an attorney. Please do not get a public defender. <laughs> you know, not that there aren't good ones out there. You know, I'm sure when you were in law school and you wanted to do and help the people, that was your ambition, that was your intention. But unfortunately, it's not reality, <laughs> right. Right. right? They're trying to make a living well. You know, my lawyer told me they get paid $700 a case. That's basically wow. how much they make. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so, you know, I mean. Yeah. And you know who's paying them? The state's paying. Yeah. The very yeah. people that are paying the other people. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. that's, that's good well, advice. I mean, you know, my attorney was a bully and he was crazy, but I mean, I, I'm so grateful that I had him. <laughs> Yeah. So are you still I active on? Again. <laughs> yeah. Are you still active on social media? Then, if people can want to reach out to you and ask questions or anything like that. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. She only got through two things that she learned. She said there were five. So I think there's some more things that she was gonna say. Oh. Okay. So you said two things. <laughs> are there other things sorry, that you said I... you learned? No. It's okay. Yeah. So the warrant, the attorney, good attorney. Yeah. And I said, you know, now, like my lawyer told me, now is not the time to fight. Like, I know that as angry as you are, every right you have to be angry, they are going to twist your, your behavior. They're going to put in the court report that you are exhibiting, uh, <laughs> you know, behavior. Behavior. Yes. Are there, but, uh, yeah, abusive person, anger management, whatever. Right. So, so you have to swallow your pride and keep in mind that this is for your children right? It's not about you right now. It's not about, you know, my rights. I mean, that's all I had on my mind was my kids. Yeah. I don't care what they tell me to do. I will do it for my kids. Mm -hmm. And what else did I learn was, again, you know, keep your mouth shut. Like the Fifth Amendment exists for a reason. And now I know why. <laughs> right. Because you take away their most powerful weapon, which is to twist your words. Yeah. Right. And use what you say against you because they will. Against you, not for you, against yeah, you. Yeah, not for you, against you. Like, I never really captured that, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's definitely what they will do. And, again, record everything. Like, here in California, we can't record secretly. Like, we have to let them know if we are going to record something. Right. So I wouldn't say, you know, don't bring out your iPhone and get them on the defensive, right? Yeah. Just take very copious notes of every single interview every single meeting you have with the social worker take down everything you know you need that timeline you need the notes and of course never admit to anything not even a little mistake or like something that you think is harmless like me having postpartum for example which right. i didn't but had i said i had postpartum they're gonna put that in the court documents and say i'm not fit to be a mother that's right, right. So, you know, don't admit to anything, take your notes and immediately forward those notes to your attorney, meet with your attorney regularly, you know, make them explain to you what the heck is going on, what the strategy is, because you need to know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you need to know. So I think those were the main things. And of course, again, my faith, you know, if I didn't have my faith, I mean, God, <laughs> <laughs> if you know anything in the biological sciences, you know, we have the amygdala in our brain, which controls our fight or flight response. Yes. And I think God turned off my amygdala <laughs> at that point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know how I didn't go crazy. I really don't. So if you're out there, you know, and you have no one, no support, like in my case, I did, but God is there for everybody, right? And the Bible tells us if we draw near to him, he'll draw near to us. So, you know, I've had my moments where I was alone. Like I lost my house. I lost my kids. I couldn't be in touch with my husband. I didn't have anybody. Wow. Yeah, and I grew up as a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you always hear the Bible stories and your grace is enough, right? Your grace is sufficient. God will never give you more than you can bear. You know, yeah. you hear those things. Yeah. And then you always say, you know, you believe it, but do you really? <laughs> You know, and then something like this happens. And I'm like, it is enough. Like, yes, I was in pain. Yes, it was not fair. Yes, yes, all of that is true. But I knew I wasn't alone. I knew God was with me. And God is faithful and God is going to bring me through this. I don't know how, but he will. I mean, and yeah. when my lawyer told me I was going to go to jail, I was prepared to go to jail. I'm like, hey, God, if you want me to go to jail, if there's somebody in jail that needs you, 
that needs me to talk about you to this person, then so be it. Right? Yeah. But God always has a plan. Yeah. So, yeah, if you need anything, if you're out there and you're going through this, definitely feel free to call me. <laughs> Wow, what an amazing story. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. What an amazing test. Yeah. And you came through with shining colors, too. Thank wow. Thank God it all worked wow. out, too. Seriously. Well, thank Literally. you guys for having this platform and putting this out there so that people can become educated and be aware of what's out there. Oh, we appreciate story. it. And so if somebody, how do you, I mean, do you? is your plate so full now with people reaching out to you? How should people reach out to you if they need to do you have Probably something email is the best way to reach out to me which which way email is probably the best way <laughs> email okay. and what and we can put that in the description right mm -hmm. so we'll put that in the right. are you still active on your blog i'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, it, so yeah, if anybody, on, right? it's it's a it's a great blog uh, and all the information's there too. It's very heartfelt. So we'll put that a link in the description as well. And so just uh, thank you. Well, a book will be coming probably in 2020. And who knows, anybody wants to make a movie? I'll make a movie. Yeah, well, <laughs> that would be so awesome. It's, it's definitely book and movie material, believe Absolutely. me, man. Absolutely, with a great ending because very few of them have really happy endings. Yes. Well, thank you so much. God bless you so much for being, thank you know, you. God bless you too.